Find out who are the most underrated Spider-Man villains in this video. Known for his intense popularity in Marvel Comics, Spider-Man has one of the most interesting rogues galleries in comics, with frequent enemies and grandiose threats. In his comics, the hero is always focused on his mission to defend the city of New York from all kinds of criminals, mad scientists, and even mobsters. However, while much is said about the Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus, the truth is that the friendly neighborhood also has other enemies that have not yet had their chance to shine outside of the comics, unfortunately. They are villains ridiculed by comic book fans. But who deserve your attention? So here we list the 8 most underrated Spider-Man villains in Marvel. Don't forget to like and follow this profile. Jackal. Oh, the Jackal. Undoubtedly one of the most infamous villains in Spider-Man's long list of enemies, after all, he himself was responsible for one of the hero's most confusing stories, the equally infamous Clone Saga. Initially, he was Miles Warren, a professor at Empire State University, who was also madly in love with Gwen Stacy. When the girl died, he simply went crazy and blamed Spider-Man for the loss. While developing genetic projects capable of changing his own appearance, turning him into a bizarre creature. But he didn't stop there, since his main plan was to discover the hero's identity and demoralize him to the world. Thus, he architected a great trap in Peter Parker's life, creating his clones, Ben Riley and Kane Parker, and making Peter believe that his life was a lie. Although the clone saga is seen with bad eyes by many fans, it is not possible to say that he is weak, considering how he turned the hero's life upside down. Spider Slayer New York City has a controversial relationship with its greatest hero. While some consider Spider-Man one of the best things to ever happen to the city, others see him as a threat that must be stopped at all costs. And that ended up resulting in the creation of a very dangerous villain, who always gives trouble to the hero. Originally, Spider Smasher was the name of a robotic army that was developed by Spencer Smythe, a Spidey-hating inventor who one day sought funding from J. Jonah Jameson himself to create powerful weapons of destruction, equipped with gadgets that they served to circumvent the powers and forces of the arachnid hero. Afterwards, Spencer's son Alistair Smythe took the reins of the project and turned the Spider Slayer into a suit that could be worn by normal humans and would transform them into super soldiers adapted to fight the friendly neighborhood. Strong and skilled, the Spider Slayers have almost fulfilled the purpose their names indicate. Swarm, originally created in 1977, as a villain of the champions, the villain that became known as Swarm has already become the subject of many jokes by fans of the friend of the neighborhood. Despite this, he remains one of the scariest foes Spider-Man has ever faced, both because of his powers and his personality. Fritz von Meyer was a Nazi scientist who worked for Adolf Hitler himself. He once discovered a colony of genetically modified bees in South Africa, and began conducting experiments so he could control the queen bee. The hive rejected him and devoured him alive, but because of his special gifts, the bees united with his mind. With a body entirely composed of lethal and very violent bees, Swarm is an enemy that appears from time to time and is mocked by the wall climber himself. Even so, he always arrives causing great terror in addition to being almost immortal, since the bees that appear in the colony always carry his murderous and insane mentality. White Rabbit Not every villain needs to be the epitome of evil and fear, and some of the best Spider-Man stories have him facing enemies that are just plain ridiculous and cheesy. The White Rabbit fits well into both categories, being a villain clearly inspired by the work of Lewis Carroll, the classic Alice in Wonderland. Lorena Dodson grew up in a noble and wealthy environment, without having suffered a day of her life. However, completely bored, she decided to act on her own for fun, committing crimes and rioting on the streets of New York, just for the adrenaline. And so, she took up the mantle and used various creations to face the arachnid hero. From giant robot rabbits to an army of smart hares, she's attacked the hero in a variety of ways, and her stories have an idiotic quality that, of course, is on purpose. After all, if Batman can also have Alice in Wonderland-inspired villains like the Mad Hatter, why can't Spidey? Hydraman. If you watched Spider-Man, Far From Home, you might remember the fearsome elementals that the hero faces throughout the film. Although the beings are just digital creations made with holograms and illusions, they are a lot of work for the friendly neighborhood, especially a being made of water. This is an adaptation of the Hydraman from the comics. Morris Bench was an ordinary man, a crewman on a ship. One day, when witnessing a battle between Spidey and Namor, 
he was knocked off the boat and ended up falling into the ocean where a powerful radioactive generator acted, converting water molecules. Transformed, he realized that his body could turn to water and that he had absolute control over the liquid. Despite his low intelligence, he is a relatively difficult character to defeat, since as long as there is a drop of water in his body, nothing can hurt or kill him. The only way to stop it is to completely evaporate the water. In the classic 90s animated series, he's made even scarier by being Mary Jane's stalker ex-boyfriend, Chameleon, a professional spy. The Chameleon is perhaps Spider-Man's scariest villain, if we take his abilities literally. Able to assume the face of whoever he wants, he becomes a very big threat when he disguises himself as Peter Parker's main friends and allies. He once even took on the face of Aunt May. Of course, all of this makes him a danger and easily infiltrates the lives of his opponents, but we cannot forget his combat training and the specialized use of lethal weapons. The villain has even had connections to Spider-Man's past, especially the deaths of his parents, Richard and Mary Parker. If that's not enough for you, he still has a heavyweight reinforcement in the family, as he is the brother of Craven the Hunter. The two have worked together in various circumstances and are always determined to hunt down and even exterminate the Spidey. It is worth remembering that the chameleon will even be in the solo film of Sony's Craven, Vulture. Even though he is one of the only characters on the list to win a theatrical version, the Vulture has always been frowned upon by Spidey fans. At first glance, He's just an elderly con man outfitted in a bird suit, flying over New York City while robbing banks and museums, just to increase his riches. And as much as this premise is quite idiotic let's face it dash, the antagonist has already given the name several times, especially when he joins the Sinister Six to face the arachnid hero. And even though he doesn't have any kind of superpower, he's skilled enough to take the air and even use weapons like his shooting feathers to destabilize his opponent. On the other hand, the character's classic costume is somewhat questionable in aesthetic terms, and it's understandable that fans look down on it. In many ways, Spider-Man, Homecoming has to be thanked for turning the character into a fearsome menace, while having a very dramatic origin story and understandable motivations. Macabre Elf. However, if we stop to think about it, Perhaps the most underrated villain in Spider-Man's gallery of enemies is the Hobgoblin, and unlike most, it's not even because he stars in few remarkable stories, but because he's always being put in the shadows. From the other Duende from Casa das Ideas. In the comics, there's more than one version of the character, the first being Roderick Kingsley, a cheapskate businessman who decided to make improvements to Norman Osborn's original Green Goblin formula while carving out a career for himself as a criminal. Villain of several arcs of the hero's comics, he has become a very complex figure. Also, for a while, Ned Leeds also took up the mantle of the character, although his original comic book version is quite different from the cheerful and kind boy of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not long ago, Marvel retconned this story, saying that Ned only thought he acted like Hobgoblin after being brainwashed by Roderick the Hobgoblin. 